All right, we're going to go ahead and go back on the record. All right, it is 5.20 p.m. We are going to go to the decision phase, February 20th, 2014. Joshua Foti and Brett Austin, 18 Cross LLC, trading as Cross Bar at 12 to 14 East Cross Street. This is an application for transfer and an amended application for expansion. The board heard um, from the applicants, Mr. Foti and Mr. Austin, their architect, Mr. Scott Sokolowski, to determine the plans for the establishment for the premises of 12 to 18. We heard from them that they had scaled their plans back from 293 seats when they came to see us last June to 155 capacity today. There were some other changes that were made to accommodate potential noise. They're going to operate a German restaurant and beer garden. So the plan has not changed substantially as far as the concept. We received petition in support with about 700 signatures thereon in support of the transfer. We received a memorandum of understanding from the Canton, I'm sorry, from the Federal Hill bordering neighborhood association of South Baltimore Neighborhood Association, who still happens to have this establishment and this address in their borders. So we heard from Mr. Dvorak Fisher, Mr. Keenan Dvorak Fisher, who testified last June before this board. He continued to remind us of the negative impact and the crime and the noise um, that has occurred in Federal Hill with the expansion and the expansion of bar stools in the neighborhood. He provided us with documentation as he had last year showing a dramatic increase in the number of bar stools in Federal Hill. Of note, uh, Mother's Federal Hill Grill more than doubled their capacity from 2007 to 2013. Additionally, um, there was also a doubling of the capacity at uh, the Stalking Horse, formerly the Four Seasons Restaurant. He uh, indicated that the Federal Neighborhood Association uh, did try to work on a uh, MOU or come to an agreement with the applicants uh, that they had requested no pub crawls and no Oktoberfests and further ask that that all pub crawls in Federal Hill be banned in order for Federal Hill Neighborhood Association to uh, support the project. And he also he echoed a theme that, that seems to be permeating through this hearing that everyone is wary um, about MOUs that are unenforceable, We're wary about what can we do, how can we enforce it. Maurice Sennett uh, showed us a video that you know, certainly didn't surprise us and, and depresses us when we see uh, unruly behavior after hours at Cross Street and we're reminded by those who actually live down there that this was just regular. I didn't, this wasn't a special, terrible night. This was just an, a, a Saturday night. It's really unacceptable um, what patron, the way patrons behave at closing time. And at this time and today, the board is, is not in a position to police all of the bars in Federal Hill and all of the patrons who leave at closing time. We, as we did last June, we heard very depressing but very real and credible arguments about some of the quality of life problems in Federal Hill at closing time. What we are trying to do here today is to try to apply those specifically to this transfer request. Ms. McCarthy um, of Federal Hill noted that the entire culture had shifted from, from 
regular retail stores to now vape, vaporizer stores and, and hookah lounges. Um, Mr. Kelly is a long-term resident and he's, he's watched the neighborhood change. He's seen the issues of safety or, and crime and parking that the um, volume of business the bars in Federal Hill, he believes, are, are causing. Mr. Renner is also a longtime resident, and he um, testified in a very similar fashion to Mr. Kelly. And Mr. Metal, who is has lifelong ties to the neighborhood, he echoed that same theme. How can we enforce an MOU? Apparently, he he believes that there's a bar in South Baltimore in violation, and and it's one of those things where it's the first I've heard about it. And so we hope that if there are bars in violation of their MOUs, that the that we're going to hear about it from community associations or individual citizens contacting our agency, contacting the police department, the fire marshal, the health department, etc. And Judy O'Brien of the Downtown Business Family Alliance, um, it, it really, it's, it's probably the most heartbreaking part of, of this entire hearing to hear about how children have to react to um, just patrons, people who don't care. People who either don't live here, aren't invested here, they just don't care about us. And this is the problem with a hearing like this is I sleep over the window in Canton and I am routinely awakened at 2.15 in the morning, between 2 and 2.15. And sometimes there are fights between opposing interests on various sides of the street. One night it was the Redskins versus Ravens cuss off. Another night somebody wouldn't give somebody a cigarette. There's, there's never a great excuse for why people are screaming at 100 decibels at 2 o'clock in the morning. And it's probably the single worst part of living in Southeast Baltimore or in South Baltimore. So where we are with the evidence, and we have clearly have support on one side, we have opposition on another. We have an MOU. The MOU, in this board's opinion, is perhaps one of the most restrictive we've ever seen in Federal Hill. Where we were, and I think that the exhibit, um, the first exhibit, actually it's, from the applicant really is impressive as far as what it demonstrates. It demonstrates, and, and most of you were here last June for the hearing, and there was no MOU at that time. There was, at the very end of the hearing, when I think perhaps the applicant's attorney may have realized that this wasn't looking good. At that time, he jumped up and said, you know what, we're willing to do 25% food. You know what, we're willing to close a little bit earlier. And it was too little, too late at that time. And so that's where we started. You know, we started at 293 and no food required. And, and then they moved to this 2575. What we have now, is 155 seats. I don't know how you enforce, how, you, how this city would fail to enforce capacity issues. When you have a place that's, that could accommodate 300, it's gonna be glaringly obvious if you're breaking the law. It's, it's gonna be obvious. If, if the place is filled, I have confidence in the agencies in the city that they can count heads. That's about the most basic form of law enforcement, and we can count the number, count to the numbers. We have clickers. We can do this, and we will do this. I'm also confident that with the MOU that's been laid out and has been agreed to by South Baltimore Neighborhood Association, that there will be vigorous enforcement of an MOU. There are no better community associations as far as diligence than the ones in South Baltimore, and I do believe that they will notify the authorities in the event that there is a violation of the MOU. So I want to thank very, very much 
the folks at South Baltimore Neighborhood Association, Federal Hill South, Federal Hill Neighborhood Association, and others who heard them out and who listened to their pitch, whether they agreed with it or not. This is a bar with 155 capacity. It is a clearly different animal that came before us last June. Based on everything we've heard, we find there's the requisite public need and desire at this time to issue this license. We do believe that this is an institution that is gonna offer unique services and products, and the very fact that it's offering unique services and products means that perhaps it will, it will bring a different style or a different approach of dining and drinking to Federal Hill. It's a German restaurant and beer garden. There's nothing else down there like it. And instead of being the kind of corporate developers like Michael Seafood, who when they were told that a 300 capacity restaurant was out of the question, they cut and ran. What in this case, these applicants have done after we told them no to their 300 plan last year, they went back to you the community association members, and finally worked it out. And that's what we want to encourage. We don't want to discourage economic development at all costs in Baltimore City. And so I applaud all of you who participated in this process, whether your group is signed on to this MOU or not, because someday that SBNA MOU may save all of Federal Hill. So we determined there's a negligible impact on general health, safety, and welfare of this community, including crime, traffic, parking, and convenience, a de minimis impact on existing licensees. We appreciate what you've done here. We will not allow any expansion of premises without hearing from you first. I thank you, and we're off the record. We're adjourned. All it takes is time and money, Mr. Woolman.